Right now, as I record this, I am not feeling well. I haven't been feeling well at this intensity for the past two months. When I created this channel, my first set of videos were about what happened to me at the end of 2018. One morning, I woke up with symptoms that were out of the ordinary for me. I have cerebral palsy, but these symptoms are not associated with cerebral palsy at all. After being told to go to the ER, I later learned that all the symptoms that I was exhibiting were neurological. It started off with pins and needles from the knees down, which quickly led to my face and by the time I got to the hospital, they were throughout my whole body. I spent 27 days between one hospital, a rehabilitation facility, and a second hospital when my symptoms got worse. They did a bunch of diagnostic testing and still couldn't find the cause of what was wrong. The doctors ended up telling me that because I have cerebral palsy, they couldn't discern what was being caused by the cerebral palsy or what was, or this unknown illness. Multiple doctors at the hospital told me I was a perfect candidate for the back with them pump. Protocol states that you have to take the highest dosage of the drug in pill form to see if your body will tolerate it. My body did, but it took months after that to actually get my baclofen pump implanted. By this time, it was already April of 2019, and in less than 24 hours of getting my pump implanted, I had to be rushed by ambulance to the hospital because I acquired a cerebral spinal fluid leak or a CSF leak, which gave me a host of horrible symptoms, a set of migraines of all, on all their own called spinal headaches, and it left me with bouts of uncontrollable vomiting and so much pain that I didn't even feel like I was a human being anymore. After 30 days at that hospital between a standard room and the rehabilitation facility, so I can relearn key skills so I can be independent again, I was sent home on my merry way, still undiagnosed, and having a doctor who diagnosed the CSF leak to suddenly say at the end of my stay, what's CSF leak? From then on, I was getting weekly baclofen increases through my pump, which then left me with basically 90% muscle tone loss as a side effect. Once we got to the end of the summer, my pain management doctor at the time wanted to do nerve blocks on both sides of my neck because at this point I was experiencing chronic neck pain that left me in just an unbearable state. Due to insurance issues, I ended up not getting those procedures done. And I ended up deciding for some time 
to stop my baclofen dose increases because I just couldn't tolerate it anymore because the goal was to find a therapeutic dose and once my body got acclimated to that dose, it was usually the night before a refill. So the next morning I would go in for a refill and within one to two days, I would lose my muffled tone all over again. As the months went on, I then had to be put in a wheelchair almost 100% of the time because a neurologist told me because of the stenosis in my spine and just other issues in general, if I fell a certain way, I was at a risk for becoming quadriplegic. So I went ahead and did so and had a custom chair made for me. And at this point, I was already having help from the state with caregivers that I had to request during my baclofen dose increases because it left me unable to do basic tasks like bathing, dressing, even brushing my hair or brushing my teeth, let alone cooking a meal. Um, I'm taking deep breaths right now, just not because I'm emotional telling this story. I've told this story to countless people it's because right now my neurological symptoms are giving me symptoms of uncontrollable nausea even with taking Zofran so I'm trying my best to get through this story So, where was I? Oh yeah, caregivers from the state. At this point, I was still dealing with the initial symptoms from the first hospital, which was something called neuropathy or pins and needles. But unlike typical pins and needles, like when you let your leg fall asleep, these pins and needles don't go away in like two minutes after walking around and getting some blood flow. These pins and needles can last hours at a time no matter what you do and they're extremely painful and I've been having to deal with that ever since and it is beyond just the spots that they were in then. I now get them throughout my whole body. I get them in my mouth. I get them in my ears. I get them in my scalp. Um, I also get stabbing sensations in my right elbow, which wake me up out of my sleep. And so many other symptoms now. I, I have an issue with heat, meaning I guess I'm sensitive to the heat and when the temperature spikes even just by like one degree, my symptoms get worse. So I'm going to go ahead and try to describe every single symptom thus far. Hopefully I get everything because one of the other issues I'm experiencing now are just issues like with memory and all that. So we've got the neuropathy or the pins and needles. We've got the neck pain. We've got, okay, the neuropathy, the neck pain, the 
nausea. <laughs> and yeah, I'm definitely gonna have to like clip this now. <sighs> Because the problem is the list of my symptoms because I've been keeping track of them not only in notes but I literally put into my eye calendar whenever a symptom hits no matter what time of the day it is and because I use my phone to film my videos I have to like stop this clip and I know that's like an easy thing to do and all that but right now having to like reach in front of me and then readjust everything to be at the exact same spot is gonna induce my vertigo so I'm not doing that so okay Pins and needles, neuropathy, the nausea, the vertigo, the crushing sensation that I feel around my stomach and ribs, the bladder issues, um, it seems to be that now I'm getting frequent UTIs even though I've just came off a bout of antibiotics sometimes I feel like I can't go sometimes I feel like I can go but I could go more um, I have issues with constipation and I know I'm listing off things that you probably don't want to know and you probably would consider, consider them TMI, but the reason I do these videos is with the hope that someone is watching these videos and maybe they have the same symptoms that I am describing and they can leave a comment down below. And I don't know, just maybe describe their experience or just simply say I've been where you are or I'm cheering you on and you seem like a strong person and you look like you can get through this that's why I'm very transparent and honest in my videos Back to the symptom list. I now feel electric shocks shoot from the back of my neck down my spine if I move my head a certain way. I've started to feel pain and burning in my right eye. As of a few months ago, I started having issues where all of a sudden it would look like someone dimmed the lights in the room and everything looked kind of gray, like the color gray, not clear. I think that's all my symptoms, but I have a feeling there is more that I'm like completely forgetting right now, and I've gone from neurologist to neurologist, and they still can't diagnose what's wrong. I ended up getting fed up a couple months ago and decided to create a whole new medical team from my PCP through any other specialist that I would need as the symptoms kept changing. So 
my PCP is my PCP listens and she believes in patient history because how can a doctor diagnose anything without hearing the patient and what they are exhibiting right now. She doesn't understand how doctors can't ask questions and listen to everything a patient needs to say because you can't go based on scans from years ago. You need to go based on what the patient has going on right now. So she's trying to rule out anything and everything she can because a lot of illnesses have very similar symptoms and even some illnesses will mimic one another and that can lead to misdiagnosis. So because of the vertigo and that was the most recent symptom I had when I started seeing her, mind you, this is just a few weeks ago. She checked my ears and there was nothing wrong, but she told me to go see an optometrist to go check my eyes and for whatever reason these appointments are really far out so that appointment is on October 22nd and I have an appointment with a neuropsychologist on November 23rd to evaluate me usually it does take two months at the minimum to get in to see anyone from neuro unfortunately which is very frustrating especially when your symptoms are like mine and they keep changing by the day so I'm hoping with these appointments we can rule things out but at the same time actually diagnose what is wrong and if you have a chronic condition my heart goes out to you because what I've learned in the past almost two years is that having a chronic condition can really mess with your head because at times you're thinking is this as serious as I think it is am I getting better because suddenly the symptoms are not as intense today and then a couple of days later they become worse than you've ever felt and in moments like these when you're considering is it time to go to the hospital? I was at that point right before I pressed record. What is stopping me right now? The fact that I don't think they're going to do anything. Because I went to the ER on the 15th. And all they told me is that everything you're experiencing is neurological. And you need a neurologist. You should have had a neurologist. And I told them, well, I've, I've had four thus far who have done absolutely nothing. Um, and I was sent home. And there's nausea again. Okay. Okay. I think. 
I've said everything I wanted to say. So I'm going to end the video here. And <laughs> I know I should be resting, but as much as we would like life to have a pause button, sometimes there isn't one. try to get through the bare minimum tasks that I've set out for today and keep on going and I don't know maybe I'll end up in the hospital maybe not whatever my body decides to do. So, <laughs> I wanted this channel to be completely <laughs> authentic, real, and show what it's like living with a disability and what people with disabilities are capable of but the reality sometimes in my reality right now is some days you don't have the capability because of whatever your condition is and that's okay so if you're experiencing something similar know that I am cheering for you and you can get through it too.